We are here at Palo Alto at the house of Victor and Caro, a very, very special couple. Victor and Caro, welcome to Women Now. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you. Let's start talking about your life. You are very artistic. You have an album here, and Caro designed this album for you. Uh, it's a musical. Tell me, you're, a tech, uh, you're an engineer too. Tell me about your life. Um, I didn't have a long life yet, but <laughs> I grew up in Ukraine, um, in Eastern Europe, and um, Caro and I ended up together at the... Um, International international program, the exchange program for students from different countries. That's where we met in Philadelphia, and then um, we traveled. We, we actually then uh, started in also in Philadelphia. I got my computer science degree, and then we traveled together in the countries of Southeast Asia, teaching computers to um, to uh, people, different yeah, different audiences. And then we came back, um, worked here in, in D.C. again, and then I, I now work for Yahoo. That's amazing. Haro, tell me about your life and how did you meet him? I was born in uh, Poland um, and um, I, um, I have a, a master's uh, in uh, languages and folklore and um, then I have a PhD in education and cultural anthropology and uh, I published a novel and uh, now I uh, just started my life coaching business, so I am a holistic life coach. Victor, tell me, what inspires you? Uh, so many things inspire me. First and foremost, it's music. Uh, in music, I hear so many things except for sounds. It's harmonies, it's, uh, it's chord structures. In fact, Indian music has a very special place in my, amongst my taste. I don't even know why, but the first time I heard tabla, the first time I heard Merdengam or sitar, I was just, I was fascinated for some unknown reasons. And so music is the f very first inspiration. Of course, people around me uh, inspire me like Caro. I also, I, I'm a very curious person, so I naturally tend to, um, to want to find out more about other people, about environment, and look for inspiration more so in other people than inside, from inside myself. But what makes you most happy? At what situation are you the happiest? Well, you know, it's 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 the happiness. I think it's a harmony of uh, of of joy and sadness all together. You know, there is no such thing as sort of perfect state of mind or perfect state of being, right? I mean, so there is all you know. There's always even among the happiest days, there's always a day where you wake up and it's like, oh, do I really have to wake up today? Could I, could I not wait until tomorrow? So, so I think probably happiness is just being, you know, being who you are, and that's what makes me, um, I guess if you want to call it happy, then that's what it is. What about you, Carol? Uh, I would have to agree with Victor that it's a harmony of uh, things, and I would call them daily things uh, that uh, make up a nice day. So obviously being with Victor, uh, reading a lot, for me personally, it's reading aloud, uh, being around good friends uh, who can support you, um, being surrounded by colors. For me, colors are super important, and so um, that's what I try to do. You both touch life in a whole different way that none of us can even imagine. Uh, is there any fear that you hold in your heart? Not at this moment. I mean, there's always, you know, concerns, things that you need to be concerned about, like, you know, everyday things, you know, you know, how you're going to pay for your apartment and how you're going to deal with this or that problem at work. Uh, but, you know, I can't say that I have a fear. I mean, I'm sure everybody has their fears. So I, some of those fears can be neglected. Some of those fears can be uh, ignored. But I, I don't know. It's it's a very very complicated question. I, I would say that I, I don't have any big fears. W what about you? No, I, I don't think I have any uh, big fears, and the reason is because uh, I don't want to be a slave of fear. If you know what I mean. So, um, you know, if you think too much about uh, fear, then then basically you become a slave of it, right? Because because you constantly think of how to avoid it or, you know, you kind of dance around it, basically. So, um, you know, like just like Victor said, I, I think I try to overcome daily, I wouldn't call them fears, they're maybe anxieties, but I don't think they amount to much. Tell me your connection with India. 
Um, so for me, the connection, I don't exactly remember the first encounter, but I certainly remember when we were studying uh, at Temple University in Philadelphia, Car introduced me to, to this very spicy food that I never tried before. And I was like, oh my God, how can you eat something like that? There was a truck on campus and you know, everyone was selling their like French fries and blah, blah, blah. And then we went to this truck and they were selling this strange spicy food. So there was very first encounter with Indian um, culture through food. And then because I was taking also music theory classes, I, I had a chance to learn more about um, Indian classic music as one of the uh, musics of, of the world because we were studying music from different countries. So there was another thing. And then of course the, 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 other, uh, the other point where I touched, uh, with, came in touch with Indian culture was when we traveled for work. For my work, we went to Bangalore and Kerala uh, together for, for to teach and things like that. So that's pretty much, I think Indian culture stays pretty close to us, like I said, through food and music primarily. Well, what has been your experience with India? Yeah, we keep joking that uh, maybe we were born in India in our previous lives because we both love Indian food and I actually cook quite uh, quite a lot of Indian food at home. And uh, let's see, my connection to India is also, well, actually the first time I came to India, I was really fascinated by colors and color combinations and the burst of color you see everywhere. I mean, women wear those beautiful saris and tunics and they are not afraid to wear bright colors, you know, which is great. Um, and, um, well, my uh, closest connection to India is actually with, uh, <clears throat> with teaching. Uh, so, as Victor mentioned, we went to Kerala and uh, I was uh, teaching a course about socio br breaking socio-cultural -cultu taboos. Um, and that was quite uh, eye-opening and uh, actually, I think, broke a lot of barriers between me and my students and also, I hope, helped them move on. Uh, they came from different cultures, uh, different countries from all around the world. And so, yeah, helping them uh, move on was was quite a groundbreaking experience for me. I think I'll never forget that. Yeah.